that that's over, let's talk about what I ate on my through hike of the 171 mile long Tahoe Rim Trail. First off, I didn't bring a stove, which meant no hot food or hot coffee on trail. I'm also not very keen on cold soaking, which if you don't know means just adding water to something like ramen, mashed potatoes, any of your dehydrated food, letting it soak um, maybe all day, you know, having to plan it out a little bit and then eating the food at mealtime cold. So if you are still interested in knowing what I ate on trail without a stove and without cold soaking, then this video is for you. I mainly eat this way out of convenience on trail. Cooking with a stove or cold soaking both require you to have to carry more water in order to cook or cold soak with. This means that I have a greater chance of being able to dry camp. If you don't know, dry camping means being able to camp overnight nowhere near like any kind of water source like a stream or a lake. The Tahoe Rim Trail is 171 miles long. When I hiked it, I took about, a, I would call a leisurely pace, which averaged to be about 13 miles a day. So I resupplied two times, which meant about 57 miles in between my resupplies, which came to be about four and a half days worth of food. For me, when I am resupplying and getting my food together, I care more about how many days it's going to take me to get to my next location versus how many miles. Obviously, the more miles you're doing, you will be burning more calories. If the elevation is more difficult, you will be burning more calories, so you need to take that into account. But for me, I think about my breakfast, lunch, dinner, and my snacks in between, so I need to just figure out, okay, how many days is it going to take me until I can get more food? I started off with a bag of tortillas, one pound of cheese, yes, one pound of cheese, avocados, and various tuna, salmon, and chicken packages. I would make wraps, essentially, for my lunches and my dinners. I actually really enjoy these wraps, and I don't really get sick of them because I swap out the cheeses or, you know, the protein going inside, and so I don't get too sick of it, and it still feels like I'm eating fresh food. Dehydrated food can be filled with a lot of sodium, and it just, I don't like how I feel on it, so for me, this is a great option. At my next resupply on the TRT, I got a little crazy, and I swapped out my cheddar cheese for some pepper jack cheese, and of course, it had to be one pound. Very excited about my new pound of pepper jack cheese. Yes, I will eat all of this before my next resupply. Got some fresh tortillas. No avocados this time. Gotta dig in here. I want this jalapeno tuna dip. Yep, this is lunch. One pound of cheese is a lot. It is a lot of cheese to eat in a short amount of time. Now, I wouldn't do this consistently on a longer trail like the Pacific Crest Trail because my cholesterol did go up after the Tahoe Rim Trail, but was it worth it? Yes. In order to not get too bored eating the same thing for every lunch and every dinner, on my next resupply, I made sure to add in some lentils. Now this is technically, we'll call cold soaked because it's just lentils sitting in some liquid already prepackaged, and these things are delicious. For dinner, I have a tortilla, some pepper jack cheese slices, and these are just fantastic. Um, I'm eating them cold and I'm just gonna plop them right in there, roll it up and shove it in my face. For breakfast, I like to eat something that's really quick and easy. I usually eat like an energy bar or some kind of granola bar while I'm starting my hike. So it forces me to kind of start hiking at a slower pace because I'm eating and chewing and swallowing and hiking and, and all of that combined makes me go at a slower pace but it helps my body kind of warm up for the day while I'm eating. And that's pretty simple, that's it for that. I also like to have some dried fruit if possible and usually I will eat that in the morning. I also like to keep little snacks in my pocket. These are some dried mango slices. Just, mmm. Then you put it right back in the pocket. And you just keep hiking. Pockets for snacks, amazing idea.
And if it's my first day or two out of a town, I will usually have some fresh fruit on me and obviously I will eat that first so it doesn't go bad. But I do like to carry fresh options from towns as much as possible. Just keep in mind, you should be packing out all of the waste and so I try to be careful with when I'm doing that because I do need to carry like a banana peel and that's kind of gross. So I will only do that if I know I'm hitting like a ranger station soon and I can throw that in the garbage. Orange peels are actually great because I, you know, put them in my trash bag that I'm, you know, carrying all my stinky trash in and the orange peels actually make it smell a little bit better. So that is great. But if you do have fresh fruit that you're packing out, you are not supposed to be, you know, throwing the peels out into the wilderness. We want to follow leave no trace. So just keep that in mind. The snack department is where I really let loose and I do like to have some junk food in there because sometimes my body really does want some sugar or, you know, some chocolate in order to help my booty get up a large incline at the end of the day. So even though I've been hiking all day and I'm pretty exhausted, eating a Snickers bar or something right before I climb, you know, 2,000 feet in elevation, I actually personally think really does help. But some other options for snacks that I've carried and like to carry, as you can see here, are various kinds of chips or cheese crackers like goldfish. Um, I'll have something sweet like Sour Patch Kids or Starburst, any kind of candy like that chocolate covered pretzels, yogurt covered pretzels, peanut butter filled pretzels. I think my main point with all of this is that you don't need to go into a backpacking store and see what backpacking food is available and think that this is what you need to eat when you go backpacking. You can bring anything you want. You just need to think about how it's going to affect your body and even your mental state with um, getting potentially bored eating the same foods or maybe what's going to taste good when you're out in the woods, uh, making sure that you know how you're going to pack all of the trash out and the waste out. You don't want something super stinky like banana peels sitting and rotting in a Ziploc bag in your pack. So for me, I think just getting out of the mindset that you need to go buy eight, nine, ten dollar bags of uh, dehydrated food and put it in a stove Yes, that is great for a lot of people, but you don't have to just stay in that lane. There are a ton of options. Just literally go into the grocery store. You can pretty much pack anything you want there. I would just be careful about eating too much junk on trail. I know some people have done it, but those people that I know have done it are a lot younger and a lot fitter and their bodies can rebound a lot easier. So. I like having some, like I said, junk food in my bag because I really actually do think it has helped, you know, boost my energy levels and really, you know, help me mentally know like, oh, I'm going to eat some Sour Patch Kids or I'm going to eat a Snickers bar and I'm going to tackle this hill and I put in some good tunes and I accomplish it and I am going to give credit where credit's due. So I think that having some of these options in your bag are fantastic but really try to have some really good, cleaner food available because it really does affect your body and your performance. Something I look forward to when I'm backpacking is having flavored water. So I always carry noon tablets and or Mio with me. And since I'm not drinking coffee on the trail, but I love drinking coffee in my real life, um, I usually choose Mio that has caffeine in it. And I try to only drink like one liter of flavored water a day, sometimes two, depending on like my mood or just because I want to. Um, I don't want to be drinking, you know, Mio and Noon tablets all day, but this is great to have in your pack, even if you just come across some water that doesn't taste very good. Sometimes, you know, it might have just like a really dirty taste to it or has a high sulfur taste to it. So the flavoring not only covers that up, but it also, once again, switches up uh, what your palate is tasting, which if you are doing really long backpacking trips, that's actually really beneficial to your mental health. I really, really believe it is. Finally, I have been known to pack out my leftovers from town. So pizza, for example, is a great thing to pack out. Do you wanna know what this is? Oh yeah. That's right. Leftover pizza.
Just put some slices in some aluminum foil and enjoy it for dinner or for breakfast the next day. Make sure you're sitting somewhere with an epic view and you can enjoy that cold, yummy pizza. And the waist is pretty small. You just have some tin foil, roll it up into a ball, easy. I think we are advertised and marketed this idea of what backpackers are and what people need to do in the backcountry. And they can kind of, especially if we're new, kind of maybe intimidate us and force us into buying certain products and eating certain things but in all reality you don't you don't need to you can you can pack out pizza and go out into the woods you can bring bell peppers and avocados and bagels and a loaf of bread and jars of peanut butter and i mean really it's just the options are endless and if you are getting bored with your food even if you have a stove or are cold soaking i mean you can get bored with food anytime Make sure that when you're going to town, you're eating things that are completely different than what you have on trail. So if I'm making a bunch of wraps on trail, I'm not gonna go in town and order a wrap. You know, I might get a hot burger and make sure I get my hot coffee and you know, make sure I'm switching it up enough in town so that my body kind of resets and I'm able to go back out on trail and you know, eat my tortillas and tuna and whatnot. I hope this has been helpful and informative and broadens your idea of what you can eat when you are backpacking for a few days, going on a day hike, or completing a through hike of a wonderful trail like the Tahoe Rim Trail. Just keep it simple, eat what you like and what makes your body feel good, and have a great time. All right, everybody, happy trails. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe as I have more videos coming out on the Tahoe Rim Trail. It has been a long time, but I am very happy to be back. All right. Bye. In the park, resupplying. It's quite a mess. Pacific Crest Trail, Continental Divide Trail, Appalachian Trail. It's the dream. Mm -hmm.